ladies and gentlemen of YouTube and fellow Metal Earth kit builders and enthusiasts. I've been doing this for a little while now. I've got a few kits under my belt and making the videos. And I had made a video on tools and uh, tips and tricks on these kits. That was a while back. When I first started building these kits, I started with the Millennium Falcon. And somewhere I read that all you needed was a pair of tweezers to put these together. Back then, you could get by with a pair of tweezers, but it helped to have more tools. Now they've got more complex, and it certainly helps to have more than just a pair of tweezers. And it helps to have more than what I did in my last video. So, I'm going to make another video, mainly on the tools with a few tricks, what I'm using to build these kits, and what I recommend, and things that you can use. So here we go. I have here one of the Metal Earth kits that I haven't opened. This is a, a TIE Fighter. I've already built a TIE Fighter, but I'd, I'd gotten an extra because at some point I wanted to build a second one. But these are the older kits, and as you see, no glue or solder needed. Um, from steel sheets to museum quality 3D models. Um, simply pop out the pieces and connect using the tabs and holes. A little misleading, I think. And it says something similar on the back. Parts can be easily clipped from the metal steel sheets as seen below. Nowhere below does it say that. So the packaging on these are a bit misleading. Or at least they were in the beginning when I first started doing them. I don't think they've gotten really any better. I've got a whole stack of kits that I've done. Where's one of the new Star Wars ones? Here we go. This is a more recent kit. And it says... Same thing. But anyhow. So let's put this aside. From the beginning, I already said it, I use tweezers. They are handy. They are a good tool to start with. They are not all you need. When I first started building these kits, I was taking the metal pieces and I have some spare sheets here to demonstrate. I didn't have clippers, so what I would do is take the tweezers and hold down really close to one of the breaking points, one of the pieces that holds it in there, and I would clip down and just kind of bend back and forth until that popped. And sometimes it was faster than others wasn't the best method to do it, but it's what worked for me. It also meant spending time straightening parts back out because of the way I did that. But it was a start. Now, my first recommendation as far as tools to get, and this is part of the reason why, would be to get the Fascination Toolkit. And it comes with clippers, some flat nose pliers, and needle nose pliers. Now the needle nose pliers, well, the needle nose pliers were rather long. And that's not to say you couldn't find your own set of needle nose pliers. I used a small set of my own for quite a while. It's, these are longer than those, which is good. And again, not to say you couldn't find a long set of needle nose pliers, rather than get this kit, or if you have them yourself, that's great. Flat nose pliers is not something I've seen a lot of, but these are real good for some of the longer, flatter parts for bending them over. But the part that I, or the tool that I enjoy the most, that I use the most, at least from the beginning, is these clippers. These clippers are just barely the right size to get in here because so many of these little spaces are so small and narrow. I've gotten other clippers, these just do fit. Just barely, you gotta hold them mostly closed. Squeeze them in there. And they just will get in there and clip the parts. I've had clippers that looked identical almost to this, maybe different handles. And I used them for models, plastic models, and clipping parts off the spruce. And they wouldn't work. They either the tips wouldn't fit in there or they weren't sharp enough to cut. So I I would say this is or I do say this is a good kit to get. You could substitute the parts out or the tools out if you have your own. That's great. If you don't have anything, you're looking somewhere to start, 
The fascination tool kit is not bad. Not bad at all. I've been using it for a while. I am getting a little suspicious that maybe these are starting to dull after 20 or 30 kits. But they're still working. These flat nose pliers are great for holding on to one side while you bend the other. So they do have their purpose. are useful. But they're too big for something like this. Which is where the needle nose would come in handy. Get in there. And those are much more narrow. Another place the needle nose come in extremely handy. The bases are a good demonstration of this but not the only time you will need it. Just clip this out of here. It goes a lot faster than trying to twist it out. So you've got long parts like this where you have these long side pieces that bend over. And if you try to do them with the flat nose pliers, what's going to happen is it's going to start to it's going to bend this down. And if you look, it only bends down part of it, not the whole thing. So now you've just slightly warped the part or you take the entire the needle nose which are long grip the whole thing and bend it over as one now you can see that bent the whole thing without further warping it and even straighten it up a little bit from the previous warp because you can fix most of this stuff although it's difficult to do it back like it was when you first pull it out of the box. Now another thing is when you've got situations like this where you have long bends you want to plan and even when you don't you want to plan these bends out. Now I've, what I've done here is you know what I've done here is actually put myself into a bind because now I can't use these to bend over the side pieces because now this piece is in the way. Had I done these two first, then I wouldn't be able to do the back. So you've got to kind of plan them out how you want to do them. Another good thing with these longer, or another thing you can do with these longer pieces, and something that I've done with a lot of the bases, is just take them and push them on a flat table. Just put it on there. The bend has got to go this way, so I'm going to push that way. So bend it over in theory there we go and push down and there you go so that's not that's another way you can do some of the long bends especially for the bases just push it on the table and the front one is a little trickier because it doesn't go all the way there we go just push on the table and bend so there's lots of different ways to do this. Different ways you can use these tools to bend and twist and turn. And these are a great set to start with. I have added to this a little bit. I have these locking, um, I've heard them called forceps or Kelly clips. There's another name that I can't think of right now. And I want to get a pair that's curved at some point. But these are good for holding on the parts. You clip them, you put them in there, and clip it. And then you don't actually have to hold them closed anymore. The downside to these is they do have ridges. So you don't want to clip them tightly because they can actually damage the part. But for tiny little parts, and I don't have anything right now to demonstrate, if you've seen videos where I've got little bitty parts that it's hard to work into place or in a tight spot, I can clip them on here, work them in, and then hold it down with my finger and snap this open. These are also handy. They're about the same length as the needle nose, long needle nose pliers. But they can reach just slightly farther because of the way they're built and the thinness back here 
the handles don't come into play. You can get these into deeper places and twist. And you can get this into smaller places. So they occasionally come into play. Now something else you're going to deal with a lot is curved round cone shaped pieces. I have this piece here. It's off I believe one of the transformers and it basically curves into a cylinder shape with a little cap on the end. I have for the longest time been using dowel rods of some sort or another. And they tend to do rather well. They're a good place to start. These are not expensive. Just cut them to length. And they come in a variety of sizes and will work for most any of the things that you want to curve. Or you can take it a step farther. I went and picked up some step dowel or step mandrels. These are for making uh, coils and jewelry making and you can find these in the craft department over where the jewelry tools are and a lot of those tools can come in handy here. They have a lot of smaller pliers, needle nose pliers that can help but these are multiple sizes that you can use. You just find the right size for the part you need to bend and curve it around. Now there are several different sizes on the two different ones you get. The downside to these is if you're needing to use one of these at the tip you don't have a lot of room to work with whereas the dowel rods you can cut longer so it's kind of a it's nice to have both for different reasons but you just curve the parts around you just have to hunt around and find the appropriate size um, dowel rod or, or whatever. Now another thing you can use pens, pencils, I have a paintbrush that I sometimes use or I've gotten away from it. I do use it sometimes to wedge the ends back into a round shape because it can still be quite difficult to be to get a perfectly round shape. Another thing that has been suggested by a couple of people and I don't know why I didn't think of it is drill bits. I have this really cheap knockoff, not knockoff, but I have this really cheap drill bit set that I will never use as drill bits because I'm honestly afraid of them. I'm afraid that they might shatter or do some harm. But the end of these could be great. Oh, if you can get them out. The end of these, the flat part, could be great for shaping parts. Just a matter of finding the right size. And often what I end up having to do is get something that's slightly smaller than what I need to be able to get the tab into the appropriate slot. And then once I get it in there, this is where these come in handy, probably one of the most handy places try to bend that tab over to get the bend started and then if I go back up to the next size let's go up to the next size from that I could have went a little bit bigger the great thing about these drill bits is they're a lot closer in size which is why I'm sad at myself for not figuring it out but I've got that slightly bent over. I want to secure it more. So I put it in whatever rounded object I'm using to shape it and I roll it on the desk. Which can be rather tricky at times. And once you roll it over, it secures that down quite well. And then you might take the needle nose pliers and just kind of compress it a little bit to get it back into shape. Close the top. It's not perfect. And as you can see on the end here, it's not perfectly round, but you can do a little more shaping. These parts that come together, squish them a little bit. And then maybe pinch 
You're very careful. You can get it closer to an actual rounded shape. But it is hard to get it perfect. That's not too bad though. But that's one way, one of several possible ways, things that you can use to make the cone shaped parts, not cone shaped, cylinder shaped parts. Cone shapes are more difficult. Now cone shaped parts are a bit trickier and I've zoomed in on this. This is a part that once you curve it is supposed to be par partially cone shaped and then we have this little piece here if I can hold on to it this little piece here you curve it but it turns into sort of a cone shape these are trickier now one of the things I've got is I've taken one of my dowel rods and I've sharpened it with a pencil sharpener you could potentially use a pencil except for the whole getting lead all over your hands you take this and this small part it'll probably work pretty good and you put it on the uh, sharpened part so that the the part that curves in is going to be the narrow part so we put it so that the curved in part is to the tip of the cone shape and you just kind of wrap it around and I start up higher on the neck and just kind of move my way downwards till I get about the right size I may have moved too far and again once you get to those end parts you may need a little coaxing to shape out properly But that's just a minimal amount of effort and I've gotten that out of it. So a little more time, take some time to squeeze and pinch things and a uh, little cone shaped piece, it's not perfect. A little bit more time to shape it and you can end up with something pretty good. Now that's going to work great for smaller parts and thinner cones something like this maybe not work quite as well I uh, want to get one of the pencil sharpeners you can find them that sharpen the larger pencils and, and I got a friend that's got one and I, I need to borrow it and maybe sharpen a larger dowel rod but you can try something similar just go higher up on it and try to do the same Although this one's probably going to be too big to actually do that. So, there's an alternative. And it's trickier, but there is. I have round nose pliers that, again, I picked up in the jewelry area, jewelry making area of the craft store. And you can use these to gently make the curves. And this is a test in patience. You have to slide it around ever so carefully, a little bit at a time. I'm going to have to bend this one back out. there and this one isn't being shaped as thoroughly as I'd like just bend that tab over hold it there and we can just take our time well pinch that little tab down if we can so it holds together This needs to be bent up. This tab needs to be bent up so that it goes into the part that's folding down. And we try 
try and bend that over. Hmm. Let's just see if we can't press that on the table to bend it the rest of the way. And there we go. That actually turned out fairly well. There we have a somewhat dome shaped part. And you know, if it's not in good shape, you can work on it. Just take your time, work on it with these, just kind of move along and bend slightly and follow the curve around however you need to do that particular part to make those curves to make that work. I'm going to try one more thing here. I'll possibly embarrass myself because I've done well so far. And this is the piece for the nacelle of the Enterprise. Well, I may not need Bend it around there. It's a good start. We bend this over this end piece. That'll help give us the shape we need. And we could potentially just finish off with these. tips around then we just kind of bend this back piece over a little bit there another shaped part again done fairly quickly for the camera but you get the idea you can use these type of tools to help shape your parts. These are what I use. If you have any better ideas, please leave them. Um, other people would find it useful. I might find it useful. I wanted to mention with these drill bits, if you have a set of drill bits you want to use, especially if it's a set that aren't very good or you don't use ever because you're, they're not quality, there's a can of stuff that you can buy that you dip tools in and it gives it handles like these and you can use other things you can use, do other things with it but get a can of that stuff dip the drill bit end of this into it that's what I'm probably going to do at some point so that it makes this into a handle and you don't have to worry about cutting yourself while you're holding this to use the end to shape the parts there's a thought you get that at a hardware store. I've had it before. Um, used it for a couple of things. I haven't used it in a long time. It's dried out, so I need to get another bottle or can. So another uh, situation you might find yourself in, uh, bending over dome-shaped parts and marbles or bouncy balls or, or anything around ball shaped can help with that and I have something here it may not be the best of examples but I think this is the front end of the nacelle of the uh, Enterprise and you can just take this and set it on the marble or whatever ball you have and just push down and it it gives it a dome shape. Now honestly I need something smaller than what I have here but again you get the idea. You can get a smaller marble or some sort of smaller ball bearing something that's more appropriate to the size of what you need and just push this down. The hardest part is keeping that that ball and marble steel. I, I usually put it in the inside of the handle of one of the pliers. But you can use that to shape these cone shaped parts or at least get them close. You might have to take some time to work them yourself, just bending a little bit at a time on each one. Until you get it where you want it. And it just takes time.
Then a little bit and move down. A little bit and move down. And again, you can see this is starting to take shape. It needs even more than that. But you just have to work with it and be patient. And eventually you'll get to whatever shape you need. And with this being metal, if you overdo it, you can usually bend it back just as long as you don't bend back and forth too many times. That is the big weakness of these Metal Earth kits, is that if you bend apart back and forth and back and forth and back and forth too many times, it will snap. And there's really no fixing that. I've had parts that broke that, unfortunately, they had other tabs holding them together, so I made it work. But some parts... It just once they break you're gonna to have to get another kit and I've done that I have several times worked on a kit and this is why I have spare parts for some of these kits fairly recently I put together this kit and did part of it wrong and it broke trying to fix it so I bought a second kit and just continued for our left off gives you spare parts but it's something that happens and over time I've learned to get better at that and that happens a lot less one other tool that I find useful from time to time, especially with getting the parts to fit, because in the videos that I do, the parts I edit them so that you don't see a lot of the struggle. You don't see a lot of the, oh, it doesn't fit, take it off, bend it a little more, try it again, no, take it off, bend it, because that happens a lot. There's lots of little adjustments to make these parts fit because they're small and there's not a lot of leeway. There's not a lot of room for error. And I cut a lot of that out because I, if I showed everything, you would end up, I would end up with a three, four hour, very long, boring video. So I try to cut it down to the parts that are important, that I feel are important. You know, you might run into this problem, try this this way, things like that. And I try to include in there, in the narration, look, this video has been edited. It may make it look easier than it is, but it's going to take time. So bear that in mind. And one of the things that occasionally happens is I get a part, two parts together that have several tabs that have to line up and all but one or two line up. Rather than taking the part back off, I will use this. It's a dental pick style tool, it's just a small pick, hook and pick set that I have. And you reach in and get it behind whatever tab and pull it out, the piece may pop into place or vice versa, push it in. This is a cheap set. You can maybe on camera see that the ends have curved but it's good for what I need it to and there's a couple of times I've used it to push on corners to finish off rounded shapes but it mostly comes in handy for pulling out pieces that were bent in too far and helping to straighten tabs up so the parts will fit together one more thing that I I do tend to use is some sort of knife it doesn't have to be sharp I've got an X-Acto knife here, it's thin. You can actually dull the blade for safety. You just need something thin that you can get in between certain areas. I've had it more than one occasion where I put a part on and the tabs that I have to bend or twist, one or more of them are really close to another part. And there's not enough room to get pliers or tweezers in there to do anything. So I have to use something thin like a knife, a pocket knife, a blade, to slide in between the two parts and pry the tab out so that I can either just fold it over with whatever blade or tool that I'm using or bend it out enough that I can get tweezers or pliers in there to twist it. So they come in handy from time to time. I try to avoid putting myself in situations like that. Sometimes it is good to look ahead and see before I fold up all the sides of this part are these sides going to get in the way of a tab that I could just put in bend and then fold the sides up so it takes some planning um, sometimes you just have to deal with it because there's no other way to do it you have to put the sides up before you can put the part on before you can go any farther there are all kinds of objects that you can use to shape these kits those are the ones I use the most often I have used things like with R2 I think I used a C or a D battery because of his size, I didn't have a dowel rod that big. I had someone leave a comment very recently on the Enterprise D kit video. They used a spoon to help shape the saucer section. Wonderful idea. I didn't think of that. 
I have used the tip of a paintbrush, a small paintbrush, not the brush end, but the other end, because it was curved. I used that to shape one of the droid heads on the X-Wings, X-Wing kits that I did. So there's, I've used marbles, ball bearings, I've used all kinds of different stuff, anything that would seem to work for whatever kit I was building, that's what I used. So be creative if you don't have quite the right thing. Look around the house, be creative. Pens, pencils, needles, um, just about anything you can find that would give you the right shape. It's good to have good pliers and good cutters for getting the parts off the trees rather than having to twist them like I did in my original kits. Anything you can do to make it easier. Any questions or comments or suggestions, please leave them down below. Any ideas I haven't thought of, share them for other people to see. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.